In this video, I'm going to share with you guys a training session I did with the Sierra Interactive community on working with buyers in 2022 and what does it take to be successful. But we also covered a couple ideas on getting listings. Uh, Buddy Blake shared some really interesting insights on uh, how to get more uh, offers accepted. So I hope you guys enjoy. As you know, Sierra Interactive is one of my big sponsors. It's the website CRM that I really work with and love. So if, if you want to check them out, use the link down below. That supports me and my channel. And thanks so much. Enjoy the show. If I could share today too, I just want you to share you know, two things. If there's anything on the front end, how do we help our clients write better offers, set better expectations with our buyers, get more offers accepted in a shorter amount of time, show less homes, write less offers. Let's do that. And then on the flip side, where I'm actually really excited about, um, and I just covered this on my YouTube channel, which is the seven strategies of what to do after your offer didn't get accepted. Mm -hmm. And that's where we really need to be really upping our game. Every, you know, good agents have one or two tactics that they use. They're like, hey, I've used this one tactic and it, it, it is helping me get offers accepted in a competitive environment, right? So that's great. Congratulations. And so the step one that I've been requesting of all my coaching clients is that we need to mastermind and think through every single thing that we could do. And the key phrase here is sometimes works in a multiple offer scenario. So for mm -hmm. example, you know, and buddy, you know, sometimes it works. If a listing comes up, up on Tuesday and I call the listing agent and I make a strong offer by Wednesday morning, sometimes I can get that offer accepted before the weekend, before really all of the other multiple offers show up. So that's an mm -hmm. example of sometimes this works. Sometimes it works to do a higher EMD or a, a deposit, earnest money deposit, depending on your mm -hmm. city or your market or your contract laws. So sometimes a higher deposit works. It doesn't work all the time. But what we need to do is we just need to make a really good list. Then from there, we can now present that to our buyers and say, I've got a bunch of different strategies, a bunch of different tactics. Here's mm -hmm. all the things and all the tools that we can use together to be able to have you win against the competition and potentially get an actual better deal than what someone else could get. And mm -hmm. that right there is a massive competitive advantage, right? right? So don't rest on your laurels of the one thing or the two things, right? So buddy, with your, if you got a brokerage, which I, I know you do, it would be, this is like a great mastermind session with the whole office. Everybody, let's get it together and let's just write, write it up on the board and build a big list. And then, you know, if we're, if we're playing good internet marketing, then we would create a white paper. We would create a really good email. We would create a really good YouTube video that is embedded into our blog post that we email off to our database, right? Because this, one of the things I'm referencing, this is content that creates clients. So what does that mean? Meaning that we are demonstrating that we have knowledge, experience, and tactics and tools that's solving one of the big problems in the marketplace today. And if, if, if you send out an email saying, I have 15 different tactics and strategies that we're using to be able to win against the competition in a multiple offer scenario, and you sent that out on an email, you did a little you know, Facebook, Instagram reel, you did a YouTube video demonstrating that. And someone who just wrote an offer with another agent, they got beat out. That agent never mentioned those things to me. Whoopsie daisies, content right. that creates clients. So I've been really been experimenting with that and it's been really fun. Like it's wild what's happening. Can I, and I want to, yeah, I want to pause you there real quick, Patrick, and ask, I know, uh, ask Buddy this. Um, I want to ask him this too. Uh, Buddy, you, I know that right now you're really focused on creativity around generating listings, right? That's where you're, you've had some good success, but I think, uh, I don't know if you're right now focused, but I think you have been on some of this exact stuff that Patrick's talking about around content to be able to share. And you, you talk about this a lot through Bomb Bomb and through your Monday morning coffee and various things where. Have you shared over the course of the past year and a half? Hey, here's some of the creative things you can do to get your offer accepted. Has that been a strategy of yours? We have, and we also tell an awful lot of stories of what don't work. Okay. And, you know, I mean, if you're a buyer right now, you're a buyer's agent, I mean, one of the things we look for is, quite honestly, newer agents on the listing side because they have no clue what they're doing. I mean, we just recently, <laughs> we, we just we just recently, I'll give an example, is um, Nick, remember Nick Goings, who football player that worked for us? Mm -hmm. I do. He, he decided to buy a house in Riceville Beach mm -hmm. and um, he wanted to go in and the house came out that morning. It was listed on a Tuesday, uh, came out brand new agent because she happened to live in the neighborhood. So they decided to let her have it. It came out probably a hundred thousand underpriced. 
And then we came in full price and, you know, with everything put together, cash deal, blah, blah, blah. You know, I think $50,000 due deal. We call it due diligence in North Carolina. They don't get it back. It goes straight to the seller. Okay. And, and she took it. I was shocked. Mm -hmm. And That's because sick. the typical thing is, I mean, I think there's probably 300 grand left on the table that would have happened, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And yes. I, th I think really understanding who your competition is really matters, number one, as to how you approach it to begin with. Because you can exactly. really, I, you know, I don't mean to use the word taking advantage, but you can absolutely take the, the, the slack out of that and just wear somebody brand new out because they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, Patrick, there's not only the things that sometimes work, but there's also the things that don't, you know, um, and I think that's of interest, you know, in education. Because really, at the end of the day, what you're doing, right, is you're serving these clients, you're serving these people who are looking to buy a home or, um, I mean, you're, you're really providing value, right? If you can... If you can say, like, here's some things I've seen work. Here's some things I've seen that that certainly don't. Like, that's a real value you can provide as a person, right? You're yep. you're not just a bot out there. Like, you're an actual person providing this value. And that's a real, yep. that's a big deal. Yeah. That story, buddy, is uh, on on listing appointments. That's the killer story. So I have, so for, for listing appointments, I have two, I'm like, you have to master two stories. Story number one, when you are a buyer's agent and you negotiated against a listing agent and you have to tell the story in which their incompetence shine and it costs the seller money, right? That's story number one. And then story number two, of course, is once you, once you, how you negotiated multiple offers and you drove the price up and then you've got the, the seller better terms, but you had to overcome a bunch of issues and details along the way. And you have to demonstrate that there was experience and technique. You know, I put this buyer in, you know, in a backup position. And then I took these two buyers strategically because their offer was this and one offer was that. And I used these other buyers against that too, brought these two forward because of these specific reasons that I negotiated against them. Then I got them up. I got the one up to here and I put these two back in the backup position. And then that one started floundering and they came back and tried to renegotiate against me. And then what I did is I said, absolutely not. I already called the other agent. They said they take the deal at your terms. Do you want to move forward or not? And then they do. And that's how I got my seller this mm -hmm. much more. Right. And my worth was this. You only paid me that. And that's so those those two stories are like the knock it out of the park on a listing appointment. Right. And, right. It, and so it is, it's the demonstration. It's the, what I, you know, I was, I was in um, Jackson Hole snowboarding last week and um, there's two kids behind me. And one of them says, you know, all these real estate agents, they just take money off the top. Right. And of course I'm standing there with my wife, who's a really great real estate agent. And I'm, you know, a coach for, you know, however many of years and a real estate agent. And I have compassion for that, but I have a complaint in the real estate industry, which is, we don't know how to tell the story of our wisdom, experience, and, 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 our, and what we do and how we do it. We're terrible at it. And all we do is promote and market our wins. I sold another one. Sold another one. I sold another one. This is how many I've sold. Look how much I've sold. Mm -hmm. And then when I ask, when we talk shop, right? So Buddy and I can swap stories and we can tell, when we talk shop, we tell the story of the dramatic and the stress and the almost a lawsuit and the six different <laughs> players I had to pull in at the final minute. And, the, you know, the gray hairs that I have from that transaction, we swap those interesting stories. Then when we go to the public to tell the story, it's like, I got him five offers and I got him a hundred thousand dollars over list price. And it was great. And I did it in two days. Mm -hmm. Call me because you can hire me. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. that actually, that marketing creates problems for us. Almost to the point where somebody could say, oh, well, then I can do that myself. Uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Right? That's true. I mean, you think that's true, buddy? I mean, we talked about this, I think, the other day, but like, you know, the the, the social media presence of the, I crushed it and I always crush it and it's so easy. How oh, yeah. I, mean, I crush it actually does not help, does not serve you well. When it doesn't serve you well, and it makes you look stupid sometimes too. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, I'm just waiting for, you know, I remember after 06, 07, you know, the downside of when this market ever does change you know, everybody's ticked off because they paid too much money or potentially. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't have a crystal ball. No, no. But I do remember getting wrapped into commission complaints and different things because they come after everybody for a decision they made. Well, you told me, but yet now they're going to have all this proof of social media. I was up against 27 people and I was able to outbid all of them for my client. Yeah, so right. basically what you're going to, that, what that's going to look like five years from now is you made me pay more than 27 other people would. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's that's an interesting point. Uh, yeah, I would I would say out of that conversation too. <clears throat> the other thing too, and I, and I thought what you were going to say, buddy Blake, was the um, on the commission compression. You know, I remember oh four oh five oh six. You know, again, market goes rocket hot. Everything gets really very really phonetic, kind of like how it is right now. Commissions come down. Then oh seven eight nine ten market gets 
really difficult and the value of a good agent is really important. And then all of a sudden commissions go back up in the difficult environment, Mm -hmm. right? So in the phonetical environment, you know, 2 million agents come into the business in 2005, you know, four five and six, then it goes down to 900 to a million agents in 2010. And here we are, we're probably at what, like two, three, two, five right now, Mm -hmm. 2.2 million. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but right now what I'm excited about is it's hard right now. Right. And there's a lot of money on the line and skill and wisdom and experience can dramatically pay off. But our ability to express that in an eloquent way that's not braggadocious is really the important skill. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's really, really important. Storytelling, as you said, buddy, is like my number one skill. Right. But let's get on to this. Let's get on to the um, your offer did not get accepted. Now, so content for clients, your offer didn't accept getting accepted. Now what? Yeah, let's go there because. You know, I've been dealing with this nonstop and there's lots of crying and lots of lots of wine drinking and you know tequila drinking and stuff like that. And that's probably that's not the best strategy. Okay. But here's what here's the question that I posed to everybody. And I say, okay, so if if there was no MLS and you had a, a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar or a hundred, you know, whatever, a ten thousand dollar commission check in your hand, you wrote an offer and the offer is completed for a three bedroom, two bath in a neighborhood, and you've got ten thousand dollars in your hand. And now what are you going to do? There's no MLS. And oh, by the way, let's just make it better. That's your best friend in the world, right? So what would we do? And obviously the first response, everybody is like, well, I'd probably go door knocking. And I'm like, well, why don't we think what's the easiest thing to do first? And then let's go down to the most difficult because going and door knocking is the hardest thing to do, right? And it's also the most uncomfortable. Now, if, if you, if some people like that, man, that's amazing. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Let's go do more yeah. of it because it works. But let's start with the easiest thing to do, right? And what, so if I just wrote an offer in a neighborhood, I would just pull up my phone and go, all right, who do I know that lives in this area and in the neighborhood? And I don't care if it's an agent. I don't care if it's a title rep or an attorney or an accountant or if it's a friend or if it's a past client or if it's an acquaintance. If this was your best friend and there's $10,000 on the line, would you at least like send a text message, right? Would you at least like leave a voicemail, right? That's easy to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I was driving over. I was showing a property in this community called San Aleo Hills. I was driving 20 minutes over to that community to show the property. And I had this great buyer. I had five people that are in my center of influence, friends. I knew like six agents who are top agents in that community. And I had four past clients. And I went, what am I doing? Right. Like this doesn't even make sense. Like, why am I waiting for the next property to show on the market when Mm -hmm. I have a buyer who's highly motivated to buy in this community? That made no sense. Okay. So that's number one. Number two. We all have this thing called email database, right? Especially all of us Sierra clients. Mm-hmm. We've got thousands of people on listing alerts and we, ne- and we send them kind of stupid stuff via email. <laughs> we all should have once a month minimum a buyer needs email, period, end of story. We all should have that going out once a month because we've got hundreds and if not thousands of people in our databases. And to say, I've got a, you know, a great couple, Robert and his beautiful family, they're looking for a three bedroom, two bath in community X. We wrote an offer already, you know, and it didn't get accepted. They absolutely love community Y. If you know anyone considering selling, would you please let me know? Mm-hmm. It's free and it's great PR for us. Because imagine if in your database of leads and past clients and center of influence, imagine that if someone in that email read that and went, my agent's not doing that, that's good for your brand. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. again, free, easy to do, takes 10 seconds to do it. Right. But let's get that set up as a, as a once a month. Okay. Next, obviously social media is, you know, we can get so much access on social media, right? You can, you know, between, you know, Facebook, Instagram, real is better than just regular posts because you get more exposure. Uh, LinkedIn is fascinating depending on your marketplace and what's going on there. LinkedIn's mm-hmm. amazing. And then TikTok is the new interesting play because it's an interest-based social media versus a contact-based that's an interesting distinction. Yeah. But then so just social media, we have, you know, most people, if I went across, Robert, I went across your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, and I looked at the totality of the number of people that are there. That's a lot of exposure sure. and a lot of opportunity on behalf of your client. Now, one of the places where I think a lot of my, a lot of agents get stuck is this is the one time that we're not being salesy. We're going the extra mile for a client. So it's not about me at this point. It's about my effort to serve this family. And that's why it's actually more attractive on social and an email and a phone call. 
because it's not about you, which is the key this equation. So there's three. Now let's go play around in the MLS, right? Which is if I know they wanted a three bedroom, two bath, whatever, whatever, just pull up in your MLS and go back to the expired cancels withdrawn over the last five, five to seven years, right? I did a deal like this. I had this, this client really wanted this niche community called Santa, uh, not Santa, uh, Elfin Forest. And they were highly motivated and there's just nothing coming on the market. So I went into the MLS, looked up the expired cancels for what they wanted. I found three property and I'm lazy. I just called the agents who previously had it listed. I'm lazy. Sorry. Right. For my crazy expired cancel guys out there, go ahead, have at it, call the homeowner. But I already had the client. The money's already there for me. So I text and called. One of the agents called me back and said, you're not going to believe this. The seller just called me. Right. They told me they want to sell it. They rented it out for two years. So it's been off the market for quite a while. And, and I said, can I show it? She said, sure. I got in there. We put the deal together for one three before it ever hit the MLS. Right. My wife's done numerous of these deals. Just calls the agent of the expired cancels because you got the client. Right. This is a no brainer for us. OK. Mm -hmm. Next. Right. You, I like, I think uh, Vulcan 7, they do the for rent by owner. So if you actually go into Zillow, you can find for rent by owners. And mm -hmm. it would take you five minutes just to do a quick search. You know, Zillow, three bedroom, two bath for rent. Take a look at all the for rents. And usually there's a lot of property managers in there. But mm -hmm. then you'll see a for rent by owner and the phone number is right there. Mm -hmm. So, buddy, you're working on a lot of, you know, get listing strategies. To me, the absentee owner, the non-owner occupied phone calls right now are the slam dunk best listing call ever. No, nope. there are getting calls, but usually it's from investors, not from an agent who's saying, hey, would you like me to get you 20% more than, you, than your home was worth last year? Would you like me to get 35% more than your home was worth last year? Would you like me to give you 35% more than your home was worth and in you know two months ago? And what's your plans for the property? Can I be of help? That's the easiest call in the history of calls right now. Mm -hmm. okay? So the for rent by owner, Zillow, you know, Vulcan seven, just look up, call the, call the owner, text him. I just wrote an offer on a neighbor's house. It was a four bedroom, three bath, just like yours there. I see you got it for rent. Is there any chance you would entertain an offer right now? That's an easy call, right? Again, start easy, then let's go hard. Right. The, the next one, of course, would be is t the, the pulling up the absentee owners. And now that's hard, making those calls. But there's also this thing called ringless voice messages. That's easy. And Sierra just happens to have a service for that, by the way. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is a little opportunity there. But even if you were to do this on a broader scale, you know, there's very there's some inexpensive services for this. Mm -hmm. But you, if you have what I've realized over time is if you have a legitimate story and you are actually trying to do something specific, it works really well. Right. right. So if we were to do, if I was to broadcast, I got buyers, your home's worth more. I got a cash offer. Everybody just poo poos that. So you've got to be like, Hey, I, you know, I have a, I wrote an offer on your neighbor's house at one, two, three banana. It was a four bedroom, two bath. And we did not get that offer accepted. I'm reaching out on behalf of my buyers, Bob and Susie, and they love the neighborhood name it neighborhood X. If you've had any considerations of selling your home, I would be thrilled at the opportunity to have a conversation. The specifics right. make it actually interesting. Mm -hmm. If you just broadcast it, I've got buyers for the neighborhood. Everyone's like, right, it doesn't work. Right? Mm -hmm. so with the absentee owners, that would be the, that would be the next move. Harder to do, a little bit more effort, but it's a great play. And if we and if we used a tool like um, I'm big fans right now. Property Radar is a company that's gone across the nation finally. They did that last year. They were only in five states. It's the same type of service as a Remine. You know, Remine, you can kind of pull up in a specific neighborhood. You can pull up every four bedroom, two and a half bath, this square footage. So with, if we pulled up the absentee owners, and if we did the third thing, which is to maybe write a letter, and there was 10 properties that were absentee owners or non-owner occupied for that specific type of property in that neighborhood, that's easy. That's 10 letters you can write in a night and then send them off. And that'd be really valuable, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So then the last thing, of course, is... The hardest thing to do would be to just go into the general owner community with that same property type, right? So there's strategy number seven. And again, now, now you can door knock if you want to. Letters are really effective. Again, instead of sending it to you know 500 homeowners, let's actually identify the 
you know, the 10, 15 to 20 to 30 ones that have the exact property. And let's send them a letter. We could door knock them. We could do the ringless voicemail or we could do all of them, right? Now, what do your buyers think of you at this point? You're hustling on their behalf, right? I mean, you're working, you're advocating. I mean, they are they like- are, You are, uh, you, they are your fans. Super raving fans, mm -hmm. okay? So now let's talk about the script to get 6% if you chose to. So one of my great clients uh, up in Toronto, um, very, very savvy guy, he had two clients. One was a, a nurse and it was a single mom nurse that he really was committed to. And she really needed to get uh, kind of buy this one hospital in Toronto. And she had a budget up to like 800 something and there's just nothing for sale. So he finally was like, I'm just going into this one community and this other community. And I'm gonna, he created the flyer that had all the right details, no salesy, no fluffy, just the straight details, finds a guy, a guy who's like, yeah, I'm happy to sell it. And then he starts kind of negotiating with the guy. And, and then in Toronto, their commission compression is intense. The average commission that's like four is like three and a half percent right now. It's, it's worse. And the U S we're averaging this last year, I think is like four and a half. So it's getting worse. Okay. So, and, but in Toronto, the narrative is very much, it's, it's a, it's a commission compression environment. So take that into consideration on this script. So, Adnan says to the guy, and the guy says, well, how much are you going to charge me? And Adnan says 6%. And the guy's just like, right? Because again, the general narrative is absolutely not 6%. So Adnan says, no professional photos, no staging, no MLS, no open houses, no buyers through your house. I control the client. We'll put the terms together and agree to them. It'll be the easiest, e easiest sale for you ever, 6%. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, okay. Sold him on the convenience. Yep. Yes. And now, if we looked, right, and buddy, you know this, if, you, if we looked at all of the iBuyer marketing plans out there, so, you know, in 2019 and 20, when the iBuyer was really, you know, kind of a thing, but just not as much today. But if you looked at all of their marketing language, it was all about certainty and hassle-free. Certainty and hassle-free was the two dominant players. And the iBuyer was charging, I think uh, the, I listened to an interview with one of the top guys on this. On average, they're charging seven to eight percent. So they're charging the seller seven to eight percent for certainty and hassle free. And they were doing it all the time back in that day. Right. So we know that the value is there. So please be ready when you find that seller for your buyer. Be ready with the script because it works. Right. Funny thing is, I didn't went on to do that for another guy in the same weekend and he got two deals accepted the following day. But those were more expensive. So he got six percent on three deals one weekend of just mm -hmm. going the extra mile for his buyer clients going direct. He made a fortune just in that quick amount of time. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Right. But I have to take like, I have to kind of start with if I put the MLS away from you guys, what would you do if it was your best friend in the entire world? What would you do? Mm -hmm. Because too many of us, you know, it's we we become accustomed to not laziness, but we've just become accustomed to the convenience of the other agent lists it, and then let's just go, you know, write the offer. So we're just waiting, right? If we took that away, what would you guys do? And that's the main exercise to play here. Right? Isn't that interesting? Uh -oh. If you disrupt when you disrupt your own just assumed thought processes, you can really get creative and have a lot of fun with it too. That's right. That's awesome. Right. So in 2022, this, you know, I was kind of saying last year, I was talking a little bit about this as like, you know, because it's just more becoming more relevant. But in 2022, this is essential, especially depending on the marketplace, because if it's real bad in your market where there's some markets that like, like, you know, it's ridiculous what, what has to happen for you to get an offer accepted. Right. Okay. So that's it on the front end. We need to do a better job of everything. You know, it's not just one or two things. It's everything. Right. And then on the back end. And then now in our buyer consultation or to get a buyer consultation, this is the last kind of thing we'll finish with, which is I'm noticing a lot of agents because their response to the velocity of the market is to skip their buyer consultations or to spend less time on it. This is the time to do an even longer one. Right. This is not the time to not do a buyer consultation. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the time to really dig in on the on the buyer consultation, which, you know, for pretty much 90 percent of the real estate community, they won't do a buyer consultation ever. They'll just do it on the fly. And I still do believe that that's not a high quality use of our time and service. Right. I think everybody would be way better. But now let's just play the offer. So how do we get someone to take the time 
Well, first we got Zooms like this. We can do Zoom meetings and, and Zoom is like yeah. the single greatest thing ever for a buyer consultation. I've done them. They're so fun. It's great, especially with all the relocation buyers going on right now. So if you're not doing Zoom buyer consultations, you're totally missing out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Zoom makes everything easier because now we don't have to go, you know, but I also say to a lot of my friends, like, why don't you just make it fun? Why don't you invite them to the best coffee shop in town? Why don't you invite them to a great lunch spot? and make it a pleasurable experience, a great happy hour exactly. spot, right? And bring your laptop and like make it a pleasurable experience. It doesn't have to be, you know, in your office. If you had it in an office, it's super helpful because you have the big screen and you can really get a lot accomplished in that, you know, professional environment. But, you know, there's really, in my opinion, there's no excuse for not having it. Now, what should we be covering on the buyer consultation right now? We have to demonstrate the list to sold price ratios and the days on market. Because if we're telling people, so I've showed Robert, you and your wife, I've been showing you guys property for, you know, once or, or three or four times. And then you finally guys fall in love with the property. And I'm now really having a strong conversation with you in the heat of the moment about writing an offer above list price. No, and I, I have shown yeah. you the empirical evidence of that. Yeah. That is a disaster. Feels like a bait and switch. It does. Right. Yeah. Which makes, makes us look more salesy. It makes us look like we're greedy jerks. So we have to, we've got to show people what's going on with the market, the velocity, the list of sold price ratios, the days on market, and, and really paint that picture. The best thing to do is to look into the sold data. So I go back into the sold data. So if I, I did this with, it's called like profitability research, right? And buddy, I'm sure you guys do this. It's a pretty cool strategy where I had a client who really wanted a single story, big house in a very niche, you know, kind of high demand area. And she had really high standards for what she wanted. She could spend up to 2 million bucks. So I was motivated. Right. And she had a high urgency. So, you know, this is one of those great moments which caused me to go outside of the norm. And so what I did is I pulled up into the MLS everything in that city that matched what she wanted over the last 12 months. And I just wanted to see. And all of a sudden I only saw that there was only five times was there a property that matched what she wanted that made sense in the entire year. When I showed her that, it was amazing. On the next property I showed her that matched almost all of her criteria she moved forward because she right. knew that it's only going to be five times in a 12 month window. Mm -hmm. That was so helpful. Right yeah. now, now take that. And now let's look at list of sold price ratios all the way across the board. That we, now we can set really high quality expectations for the customer about what they're about to experience. Right. A lot of the clients in the really aggressive marketplaces, we have to tell the, we have to tell the buyer, I'm sorry, we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to start down here because your budget's here. And I got to, we can't write an offer on anything there. We have to write an offer down here because I need that extra room for the negotiation, right? And you have to show that empirically. You can't just tell people that. That's really weird and awkward. Okay. Yep. Then key phrase for our clients, here's our list of awesome things that we can do to negotiate to help you win against the competition. Let's review that up front. And then for our clients, here's all the cool stuff we'll do if you lose. I'll do all of these things for you. And if you are a client of ours, here's all the off-market strategy stuff that we do for our clients. Mm -hmm. Well, Robert, how do I become one of your clients? Right. Right. You're like, well, how do you pitch the buyer broker agreement? I don't. Yeah, it already pitched itself, yeah. People ask me how to, you know, to hire me. How do how do they become a client of mine? And right. isn't that what we all want, right? We all want the person that says, would you please work with me? Right. Right. So there we go. I mean, it's never been a better moment for us to really level up our, to really share and our knowledge, wisdom, and expertise in the difficult moment. It's never been a better time to do that because you get such amazing results from that. You have raving fans like no other, right? right. And, you know, the, you know, who knows what's going to happen to the real estate market, right? So in those instances where you, He's right here. He's able... a, you know, these are two of some of the smartest e economic guys that I'm aware of on the planet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I pay very, very close attention and I still, you know, I can't figure it out. That one right here, 2017, it says 2% mortgage rates, $40 trillion in debt. Well, in 2017, he projected 2% mortgage rates. Did it happen? Yes, it not in 2017, yes. but it happened. Yep. That's pretty powerful stuff. So I'm, I'm trying to pay attention. But at the end of the day, when I asked him when I was going to buy a new house, Right? And I was worried about prices going up, right? And I was like, and, you know, I was trying to have that investor mindset. And I said, like, hey, Bruce, you know, should I buy a more expensive house, right? This is because I'm like, what if the market turns? And he looked at me and he goes, is this for your family? I said, yeah. He said, 
can you live there a long time and enjoy your life? I said, yeah. He says, can you afford it? I said, yeah. And he says, then all you want to be able to do is bribe out your interest rate. And he turned around and walked away. Right. <laughs> right. You know, right. Yesterday, one of my, my wife is, uh, she's cracking up because one of our, our, our buddies called her up on one of her listings. And he's like, I've had too high of standards. I've been looking for a property for a year and a half. Whoops. Yeah. What's happened to prices in the last year and a half? Yeah. And he yeah. works oh, yeah. for one of my buddies who's one of the best mortgage brokers in all of San Diego. He works for him as his accountant. And what happened to mortgage interest rate? It has gone oh, way up now. Yeah, it's helpful for us to help people get out of their own way, right? Right. Can you afford it? Can you live there for a long time? Is this a good decision for your family? Right. Good. Isn't house. it good to have people like that who can take something that on the surface seems so complex and everything and just really distill it down to a desire and, and wisdom? And then yes, the answer is yes. And then that really helps to hone in motivation and a sense of urgency or not. In the similar way, Patrick, you talked about taking the time just to show kind of what's come on the market, maybe how many days on market, uh, various things over the course of the past, say, year. And so that buyer then says, OK, I'm going to dial back because I can't play in this in this game at this moment, but I'm going to be working with you and we're going to watch it. Or like your example uh, of the person who said, great, next time something comes on, I'm moving. Right. I'm yeah. doing it right away. I'm not going to play the. You know, I'm not going to wait because I can do it. I want to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, and you, you let it just as a, a thing that can really oh, it seems so complex, but you just take something that can just you use that hammer, you just crack it, boom, just right there. And it lays it out for you. And it just really gets to the motivation of the heart of the person. Yeah. What they can do. Yep. Boom, help them move. Yep. One of the one of my best um, coaches said something to me He's he, about motivation. He was like, do they have a have to motivation or a want to? Mm -hmm. And right now, if you're not working with the have to, you're really it's, it's going to be a rough go. And or what happens is we waste a lot of time with the want to and we ignore the have to. And those are the deals we lose. Mm -hmm. That's the one that goes to the open house and then writes the offer with the listing agent because we actually were neglecting them because we didn't recognize that they really did have a have to motivation. And we were wasting much time with a bunch of want to's because the want to's love to go look at property. Right. The want to's love talking to you. They want to see everything. The have to's right. are like, find me the thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's pretty right. cool. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta jump. You guys, we're, we're at Patrick, the full time we're gonna see you. We're gonna see you in person in May. You, me, and Buddy. We're all gonna be together along with a right. lot of our friends at the Sierra yes. Summit May tenth. You'll be on one of our panels. So excited to have you back in Label. I'm not there anymore, but you'll be joining in Label as yeah. will I. And yeah, uh, yeah we're gonna have a ton of fun. Think the country to get there. Yeah, well, th yeah, that's right. Well, thanks a ton for being with us today, Patrick. Tons of great insight and value. You can find Patrick on YouTube. I know that's where you're really present a lot. You dropped LinkedIn. So that's an interesting thing. I don't hear a ton of agents talking about LinkedIn. So uh, certainly. LinkedIn should be good. Like for my DC client, LinkedIn mm -hmm. is a major player. Yeah. Right? He, so he's killing it on LinkedIn. So, you know, you want to really think through your marketplace. You know, does does LinkedIn have a, a big marketplace in your in your community? If it does, it's really powerful. It's, and it's less busy, less noisy, less agents there. So. Pretty cool. You're getting, we're getting thank yous and somebody who said the have tos versus the want tos is amazing to think about. So thanks, Patrick. Thanks to all of you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great day. See you guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.